It seems Nicolas Maduro is a man who just can't lose. There are widespread and growing protests in Venezuela. People who swear up and down that Maduro was crushed in this weekend's election. Three separate Venezuelan polling firms had him far behind this month. He's the runner-up in each case here, sometimes only barely ahead of not sure. And on election night Sunday, the opposition said their man had won with more than 70% of the vote. But in an authoritarian country like Venezuela, that's not enough. The Maduro-controlled National Election Authority declared him the winner with 51%. 51%. 51%. 51%, just barely a majority. Virtually every state apparatus in Venezuela is controlled by Maduro's party. And its head elections authority has made it very clear, Nicolas Maduro won just like he won in 2018 and just like he won in 2013. But many world leaders, Chile, Mexico, Uruguay, Argentina, Peru, Costa Rica, they reacted the way the United States reacted. We have serious concerns that the result announced does not reflect the will or the votes of the Venezuelan people. The will or the votes. That's about as close as Blinken could possibly have gotten to saying this election was rigged. Let's explore how and what it would take to reverse the outcome. It was clear from the start this would not be a free or fair election. I don't think anyone was under the was ever under the impression that these were going to be free and fair elections. Um, the question I think up until last night was what other steps the government might be willing to take um, to make these elections less free or less fair. The opposition leader, Maria Corina Machado, was barred from running at all. That ruling came from the country's Supreme Court, which is stacked with Maduro loyalists. She still tried to campaign for her replacement, Edmundo Gonzalez, but on her travels, she would find highways and gas stations mysteriously closed along her route. There is just this constant sort of trickle of harassment. I mean, everything from bus drivers to taxi drivers to uh, restaurant workers to roadside stand, you know, uh, sellers that attended to her have been harassed and arrested. And it wasn't just Machado. Her staff was targeted too. More than 70 opposition campaign workers arrested just since the start of the campaign a few weeks ago, according to one human rights group. But Machado pressed on. And the setbacks continued. Closer to election day, Venezuela revoked an invitation to EU election observers to monitor the election. Maduro, angry about international sanctions, called those observers not worthy. And on the day itself, the opposition said its witnesses were denied access to the headquarters where votes were being counted. Only a small group of observers were allowed at all, some of whom are now calling on the government to release polling station level results, which it has so far refused to do. For some reason, they're not publishing that data. And of course, that does not look good. The end result, 51% of the vote for Nicolas Maduro, just 44% of the vote for his opponent, Edmundo Gonzalez, who would later tell his supporters, Venezuelans and the entire world know what happened. This was devastating for those who thought this time would be different. They felt robbed. And it's important to underline how desperate for change many people are from life under Maduro. Despite sitting on top of one of the world's largest proven oil reserves, Venezuela has been an economic mess. It grappled with one of the worst hyperinflation crises in modern history. Prices going up 53 million percent over just a three-year period. Just to buy chicken cost whatever this amount of money is. Unemployment, poverty, malnutrition, shortages of basic goods, they were all daily problems. More than a quarter 
of the country's population has fled just in the last decade alone. That's nearly 8 million people, making it the largest displacement crisis in the world today. The country has changed since the last elections, and the opposition wants to win so that the Venezuelans that have left can come back. Any hope of that changing hinged on Maduro being voted out. It is a shame that quite likely, almost certainly, the Maduro government violated their trust in those institutions. The evidence that this was not a free nor fair election is compelling enough that several foreign governments have held off on recognizing the results. Canada is among them. Canada, like many of our other allies, like many of the world's democracies, has serious concerns. The White House said it wants Venezuelan officials to publish a full, detailed tabulation of votes. You heard the U.S. Secretary of State earlier. It's critical that every vote be counted fairly and transparently. And there has been a parade of world leaders speaking out against Maduro's supposed win. Lo acontecido el día de ayer. Un avasallamiento sobre el sistema democrático libre, abierto y transparente. Tienen que ser verificadas por veedores internacionales no eh, dependientes ni partidarios del gobierno. Llevado a cabo y perpetrado el dictador Nicolás Maduro, no es ni más ni menos que una victoria pírrica. But can any of Maduro's momentum be stopped? That's a hard question. He has the firm backing of the military. The legal system rules consistently in the government's favor. The legislature it's very scaled back. Maduro's government actually established a parallel lawmaking body stacked with his own supporters, which legally overrides the country's National Assembly. The media, the economy, the country's oil reserves, all state controlled. Within Venezuela, I don't think that there's any, any recourse, no, other than showing this fraud, people in the street, and the pressure of the international community. Foreign governments can impose sanctions, which they did in 2018 when all of this happened before. Nicolas Maduro has been re-elected as president. His supporters were quick to celebrate. Back then, the Trump administration called it a sham election, and it immediately barred U.S. companies from buying Venezuelan debt. But a day later, Maduro's government expelled two top American diplomats, saying the empire doesn't dominate us here. It can do this because it has friends in high places. As Venezuela's ties to the West have weakened, it has forged new and stronger connections with Russia and China. Vladimir Putin has already congratulated Maduro on his victory and has promised to deepen ties, leaving the world to wonder, what would it take to unseat a leader who, by the end of this newest term, will have been in power for nearly 20 years in a country under single party rule for more than 30. I think that there are a number of factors that we can look at right now that are different and distinct from what we've seen in the past. One of those being um, popular sectors, lower and working class sectors, really pouring out in support of the opposition, which we have not seen before. Um, and that could result in a different type of pressure that we haven't seen in the past, um, both for material reasons and ideological reasons. We don't know how this story, the uncertainty, will end. It's unfolding as we speak. The election result has set this city alight. Police, the armed forces, tasked with defending the result. But Maduro's critics do believe there's reason to be hopeful because, they say, look at what happened. Voters came out in droves. They lined up for hours. They spoke with their ballots, largely peacefully, and they say they won the election. That's not nothing, even if the official results say otherwise.